So, Father, we ask that you would bless us in a special way throughout this service. Speak to us through the music, through the message. We ask you, Lord, to be a blessing to each person who's here. What a great uh, sight to look out over the crowd and see so many faces that we haven't seen in such a long time. We pray that as we leave from this place today, we can find ourselves singing the old hymns, remembering the prayers, taking something from the message that would help us in our daily walk for you. Lead us now, O Christ, and pray these things in your blessed name. Amen. Please be seated. Our Old Testament reading uh, from the book of Exodus, chapter 20, the first 17 verses, and there we read, God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath, and he made it holy. Honor your father and mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his male or female servant, or his ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we...
Father God, we come to you again this morning on a beautiful Sabbath day. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to be here this morning. Lord, you've heard this spoken and the unspoken prayer request. Lord, we ask you to reach out to the people that are not here with us this morning, whether it be sick or whether it be in quarantine themselves for the, the virus that's going on. But we pray this morning for this virus. We thank you for the vaccines and stuff that's coming out and saving up through this morning. Well, we pray this morning for those people that are given the vaccine shot, for the people that are going to a lot of trouble for calls to get people lined up to get the shot. We pray this morning for our military, our firefighters, our police officers, our doctors and nurses, especially those doctors and nurses that work so hard to try to cure this virus. We have to be with them through this day and through this week, Lord. God has to direct us to everything we do in sight. Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I'll be reading Psalms 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voices is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth, their word to the ends of the world. In the heavens he has pitched a tent for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming forth from his pavilion, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heaven and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is hidden from its heat, heart, heat, excuse me. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord are sure and are <coughs> righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the comb. By them <coughs> in your servant, in keeping them, there is great reward. Who can discern his error? Forgive his, forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servants also from willful songs. Then may they not run over me. They will, there will I be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May the words of my mouth in the meditation of my heart, pleasing to your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And this is the Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us give God thanks and praise from whom all blessings flow for the gifts that He's bestowed upon our church that we might continue to hold our services here to teach the saints in this neighborhood, but also to give our missions dollars that we might reach those around the world with this good news. Let us stand as we sing the doxology. <laughs> For the message of the cross is foolishness 
to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has God not made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world through its wisdom did not know Him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs. Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God, for the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Christ sent with the disciples at, his, at the Passover meal. And he took a simple item that be him at the Passover meal. A sign of remembrance the unleavened bread. He took that bread and he gave it special meaning. When he blessed it, he broke it. And he gave it to the disciples. He said, this is my body. Eat and remember me. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And Lord, we're going to go start a fellowship. We've got a lot of people to fellowship with this morning, don't we? Yeah.
when your weary heart is tired. If the world should leave you uninspired, when nothing more of love's desire, my blessing goes with you. When the storms of life are strong, when you're wounded, when you don't belong, when you no longer hear my song, my blessing goes with you. This is my prayer for you, there for you, ever true. Each, every day for you, in everything you do. And when you come to me and hold me close to you, I bless you and you bless me too. I bless you and you Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and in the temple courts he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, Get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered that it is written, Zeal for your house will consume you. The Jews then responded to him, What sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all of this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. And they replied, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you're going to raise it in three? But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. And then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just before the message, the prayer. Father God, as we sit now in the quietness of this moment, open our hearts and our minds. Speak to us, Lord, whatever we would need to learn individually from these passages of scripture that we've read today from the hymns that we've sung, from the prayers that we've prayed, from the time of gathering around your table to remember your sacrifice, and now in this sermon. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The curator of the Louvre Art Museum in Paris is murdered, and beside his body is scrawled this message, 13, 3, 2, 21, 2, 2, Eight, five, followed by these words, O draconian devil, O lame saint. Does anybody know what that's from? That's from Dan Brown's book that was released a number of years ago called The Da Vinci Code, which later I think was made into a movie. And as it begins, it promises to lead the reader through a series of mysteries and codes that not only relate to the murder, but also to a conspiracy that the Christian church has allegedly covered up for many centuries. The book is pure entertainment, of course, nothing more, nothing less. But what makes the book so intriguing is Brown's ability to hook his readers 
with a sense that they too are all involved in breaking the code. I remember when it came out, people were coming to work and talking about, they were trying to read along with it and break the code and figure out what it was. It's what helps us to debunk the mystery and solve the case, so to speak. And that's what captivates us about life itself. Each and every day we run into mysteries, we're surrounded by codes, we all seem to search for the meaning of what seems to be incapable of being explained. Ask a teenager what the word fat means anymore. Not F-A-T, but they use it to spell P-H-A-T, which is usually a good thing. You might be surprised the responses that you get. Spend some time watching or observing your kids or your grandkids on the internet in a chat room or sending text messages ask them about the abbreviations that they're using like LOL what does that mean? Well, yeah. we all know that one BRB be, be right back you leave them hanging for a minute you can even watch two identical twins who are not yet out of diapers playing together and those parents of those types of twins have discovered that they have a language all their own that nobody understands but the two of them. We're not only interested in specific particulars of behavior, the codes and the mysteries go beyond the specifics and deal with the unknown things of life. The mysterious DNA code continues to amaze us. The miracles of births as well as the sanctity of death remain mysterious as well. We know they happen, but we don't know all of the why. And hows. When we're confronted with life's tragedies and triumphs, we often desire to ask God why. I tell people at funerals that's the most often question that I get. And it doesn't matter whether it was a young person that passed or someone well into their 90s or approaching 100, I still get asked why. Why couldn't they live just a little bit, bit longer? Why did they have to get sick? Why did this have to happen. We may sit in the silence of our prayer times and ask God questions, the why questions too. We may ask God why do tragedies happen? Why do so many wars in our world involve religious differences? Shouldn't that be off limits? Why did you send your own son to suffer and die for us when we rejected him? When we read the gospel text, we usually choose to focus on Jesus' interaction with money changers in the temples. And I know for years, some preachers have used Jesus' wrath in that particular passage uh, to land-based bake sales and raffles and what other people might view as great sins and vices promoted by well-intended parishioners. The meat of the text, however, is served in the verses that follow after that. The Jews look for a sign. The Jews look for a sign. Jesus speaks about tearing down the temple and he's going to build it back up again in three days. The Jews are confused. They think he's talking about the temple that they're in, the one that he just drove them out of. But Jesus was talking about his body. The writer of John breaks that code and lets us know Jesus is really talking about his death. And in three days we know he built that temple up again. Amen. And the verses remind us of the experience that the Jews shared as they encountered Jesus. Somehow they failed to see the obvious. They didn't recognize that the one who stood before them was the Christ, the very Son of God, right in their midst. They wanted more than Jesus' presence. They wanted guarantees. They wanted power. They wanted magic. Something to reassure them that Jesus would be a king after the order of their great ancestor, King David. They wanted magic wands or, or something. It wasn't enough that it was just there. They failed to accept that Jesus' power resided in His ability to go to the cross and suffer and die for the sins of all mankind. As a result, Jesus speaks a word about the temple in a code-like way. Destroying the temple. Rebuilding the temple in three days. That would have been just as inconceivable to them as Jesus being crucified and then raising up again three days later as he did. They couldn't have imagined either one of those things happening at the time. Jesus' mission on earth just wasn't enough for them. A 
sometimes wonder if we fail to see the obvious too. I wonder if we're all looking for more than what Jesus is offering. And as we look for more, do we look beyond and miss the opportunities that Jesus gives us every day? Do we see Him in the breaking of bread here each Sunday? Do we see Christ in the smiles of each other as we walk into the sanctuary and meet together and share our failures and our triumphs? Do we feel His presence as we share the peace each week after communion? I know it's a little bit different now than in years past, but nonetheless, we're passing the peace to one another and it means just as much. Do we see Christ in that? Back before the pandemic and before they put their restrictions on the numbers of volunteers, did we feel like we were touching Jesus when we would go to the rescue mission and feed there in the kitchen and help out? Do we truly trust that as we worship in His name each Sunday morning here at First Benton, that Christ is in our midst? I hope that we do. I really hope that we do. It can't be that simple, can it, preacher? There has to be a difficult code to be broken to get all of that. Well, if we follow Jesus through the Gospel of John, however, we see that at the end, the code is broken for us. Jesus is the one who says, no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. And Jesus is the one who did exactly that. Jesus went to the cross and He gave up His life so that He might make us, that's you and me, and everyone else who had been His enemies into His friends. The power of the story is found in the fact that it is for each and every one of us that He did that. God meets us in a real personal and intimate way. God meets us in the bread and the wine, the body and the blood. Even as God meets us in the gift of Jesus Christ, the code is broken and what seemed like a mystery is now revealed. This is our God. This isn't a God who is distant, who's way out there in outer space, but a God who is so close that we can taste, touch, feel, hear, see Him in one another and in the world around us. Somebody that read that book told me, they said, well, I found the book to be kind of slow going. They said, I've never read 35 chapters of any book to find out that I'm only halfway through it. <laughs> I guess they never read War and Peace either. They said, I was halfway finished and I had no clue what the ending was going to be. They said, usually by halfway through a book, I kind of got an idea. So as we continue in our daily lives, we can be confident that the ending of our story, friends, is not in doubt in any way whatsoever. God is revealed to us in Jesus Christ. If we accept it, we've been given a life that will never end, even when on this earth, temporally, we have been given that eternal life with God. And that is no mystery. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Lord, we know there are no secret codes with you. You never try to hide anything. You never try to make difficult the understanding of knowing and doing the right thing. So continue to speak to our hearts concerning the things we've heard here today and experienced here today through your Holy Spirit. As we enter into this third week of Lent, Help us to continue to learn to deny ourselves, to take up our cross, to follow you more closely. Speak to our hearts about the things that need to be changed and give us the strength and courage <clears throat> and the will to want to earnestly and sincerely change them for the better of our Christian walk. And to this we say, God, we pray today for healing of both people and situations near and far. Comfort all who have lost loved ones. Send your peace to them daily. We pray for those out in the community around us and the world over who are homeless, who have no shelter from the cold and the rain. For those who are hungry, Father, most of us here have never experienced true pangs of hunger. Help those who are lonely, widowed, 
orphaned. We fight on behalf of all of those who are seeking equality and justice. Father, we pray for our leaders in government as difficult decisions are made currently involving all of us. Father, speak to their hearts. Help them to feel your presence and help them to be receptive to it. We pray for our President Joe, our representatives in Congress, our Governor Ralph, our state representatives. We pray for our Mayor Bradley and all of our town council members. We continue to lift up and pray for our doctors and our nurses and caregivers as they are dealing with the pandemic in a frontline way. All of our law enforcement, EMTs, and firefighters. And we humbly ask that you would keep us all safe and healthy in the week ahead. To this we say, Lord, hear our prayers. God, we pray for your church on earth. Give us daily strength and courage to fight the foe. Help to keep snake, Satan's snares at bay. And help us to love and serve all people in the world that you've created. We remember Terry, who's our general minister and president. We also pray for Bill, our regional minister. We lift up each of our deacons, deaconesses, and elders here at First Church. And all of the work that they do in this place. And for all of our members and friends who are gathered here to learn today to go out and carry your joyful word forth tomorrow and in the week ahead. And to this we say, Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, as we come to the close of the service now, we pray that you'd speak to us through your Holy Spirit. As we sing together a hymn to your name, may hearts and lives be changed and decisions of everlasting importance be made. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, for he is the one who taught us to pray even when we didn't know how. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn of commitment is Where He Leads Me, I Will Follow, number 346. If you have anything to share with your church family, please come forward, or you may stay after the church and approach me. Anything that gives God honor and glory. Number 346.
so you might be listening here today, and I'll reach out to them this weekend. I'll know that they will miss. I'll be needing for any reason this weekend. So always reach out, and I'll help be there for you as much as I possibly can. So you have a great week ahead, and be aware of that thing that Christ is going to place before you that we might otherwise overlook. That He's going to have you witness for and do. Let's respond now with our commissioning statement. I'll do our benediction, and we'll return to our. In the power of the risen Lord, we now go forth into the world to fulfill our calling as the people of God, the body of Christ. Go in peace and love and care for one another in the name of Christ. And may the Spirit of the Lord show you a path to walk minute by minute. May the word of the Lord grant you the saving wisdom and knowledge hour by hour. And may the love of the Lord fill you and shine forth from you now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Love you all. Thank <laughs> you.